Brothers and sisters, you're welcome to Heal Media Africa. Today, here we discuss self-emptying series. Our topic today is principalities and powers. It is a very charming topic. It is also very inviting. And I hope and I wish to call on the Holy Spirit. Without whom we can't make any headway into this topic. Of course, Holy Spirit. You are the animator. You are the solace. You are the comforter. When we are in danger of being sub Oppressed and oppressed by principalities and powers that would have become our source of upliftment. Help us, Holy Spirit, to anchor to the Father and the Son through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wow. Principium. The first principle. The first principle, the highest of all principles. God is known as the prima causa. The first cause. God is the first principle. God is indeed that principle himself. If there is any king, if there is any authority... They derive the authoritativeness from this first prince, from this first principle of authorities, God. And consequently or subsequently, the Son Jesus Christ, to whom, as Philippians chapter 2, 10 and 11 says, he has given authority over all things and in his name, every kneel is meant to bow to worship. Principalities are interlopers to the power of God. To what God owns. In fact, St. Paul captures this very well when he said, All authorities on earth derive their places in God. And so we obey the kings of the earth because... God gave them the power. Authorities on earth must be under the authority of God. And all of us then must be under the authority of God. Being humans that we are, then we are always to remember that it's a privilege that we are kings or that we are governors or that we are members of the house of rape and this and that. None of these uh, exempts us from the challenges, from the responsibilities of the rule of law, as it were, the principle of order and orderliness in the society, the principle of fairness to all, equal treatment. None of these positions of authority exempts us from it. Even the so-called constitutional immunity to presidents and deputy presidents, or to governors and deputy governor, they are not in themselves rights. They are privileges. They are privileges and they should remain as privileges. And what does that mean? Is that even with all the immunities, we are still all under the same principle of fairness. Fairness to a president, fairness to the lowest man in the society, fairness to all. We don't want the president to be distracted from solving the problem of the nation. We don't want the governor to be distracted from solving the problem of the state. That's why we get them immunity. It's not because they are not capable of committing sin or doing something wrong. So let us face the reality of principalities and powers. Is when the powers begin to be inappropriately appropriated. And these principalities and powers, they are in the society, in our church. They are in our families. They are in our villages. 
And what did they do? Anything that they are not the ones that approve it, anything that they didn't come up to, anything that is not to their own favor and uh, aggrandizement or ecstasy uh, and their own personal uh, upliftment will be put under the feet. They will make sure it never exists, it never comes to fruition. It doesn't matter whether hundreds and thousands of people will benefit from such goodness. Their interest is it should never be allowed to exist because why must it be this person I don't like? Principalities and powers. You notice what happens in our circumstances, in our environment is very, very dehumanizing. And it is not dehumanizing the person doing it. It's dehumanizing mostly the poor and the marginalized who have no say. So you wonder what then is powerful? What was the power meant for? Why the power of the prince, prince who is now the possessor of principalities and the assembly of powers that be? If we cannot use our privilege, opportunities, privilege, chances that we have to better the life of our environment of our people which is exactly what jesus did jesus was in the form of god jesus never counted equality with god jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death having taken the form of man in order to save man all the powers all the gifts all the benedictions and the opportunities that Jesus had as a as a son of God came down to the earth what did Jesus do with it to better the life of the poor and the marginalized that is what is expected of you and I principalities and powers not to join the camp of the evil one the prince of Bezebel who suppress and oppress the children of the kingdom. Holy Spirit, God, our Father, in your Son, Jesus, give us the coverage to overcome principalities and powers of the world in our environment through Christ our Lord. Amen.